episode 10, Two Dumb Yinzers. Crazy J from YouTube stops on by to talk addiction and recovery. Now, on Two Dumb Yinzers. And we have a guest in today. His name is Jason. And Jason, um, what he does is he produces all these YouTube videos. And it's just all this so, it's all really different cool things. Um, for example, one, he uh, tracks people down who scam people online. And he's able to, to, by using his skills, you know, track all the way back to the person. And what I learned was there's really no law enforcement on this right now. You could basically scam, 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 and nothing could be done. You know, people aren't getting thrown in jail for stealing grandma's $40 from her cash app. People aren't going to jail for, you know, and that's kind of one thing I understood. I, I figured out when he was talking because what do you do about these criminals? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. We, we, so hmm. Huh. I got a new side venture. <laughs> <laughs> right? But no, that's kind of that's messed well, up. It really is. Yeah. Well, so we have Jason, and how you doing today, Jay? I'm doing good. 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 Um. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your your YouTube page. So on my YouTube page, first of all, um, well, so I've been through a lot of stuff in my life. Right. And uh, I call it the dark side which is addiction. Okay. And, uh, and that's so, the name of your YouTube page, The Dark Side? Oh, no, it's Crazy J. Crazy J, okay. Yeah, uh, I call it Crazy J because the people say I'm crazy for the way I tell stories. I, I speak in analogies. You're interesting. I I hope Thank so. <laughs> yeah. Um. So what I do, um, actually, what where it all originally comes from, real quick, and I got a whole other story on this, too. Yeah is when I was in jail, in my addiction, 2012, right. my parents turned me in. I met this guy named Bruno. He had me memorize these scriptures and out of the Bible, because I always read my Bible. Right. And, uh, well, I took memorizing scriptures. I didn't know what they meant at the time. This was 2012. I, I, I always liked my Bible. Then I took that to rehab. He said, carry on his legacy. As I was learning stuff in recovery and taking it seriously, for, my, for the first time in my life. Absolutely. Um, I'm like, wait a minute. I, I'll memorize a new scripture on my own. I'll be like, oh, that's something I, that reminds me of something I learned. So I'll take a scripture and then I translate it into recovery terms. Now it comes to everyday life struggle terms. Apply it, yeah. To be helpful. So every, all my ideas all stem from basically God and the Bible. Good. I tell that's, you what, you have a, a wide variety, a, a wide array of different video ideas you know as i was just going down through your your list you know before the show you know you, you got a lot of content that's and i have little views and barely any subscribers because my stuff is all over the place right if i had just once if i stayed all recovery or something i might get subscribers but that so when i started that youtube channel it was when the pandemic started okay um in 2020 and oh, this is another typical day for me. Yeah. And uh, so all these people, are, you know, they're scared and stuff. So I know science because I grew up, I dropped, listen, I'll be honest. I dropped out of school seventh grade at 15. Stay in school, for goodness sake. But I'm self-taught in everything like science, the Bible, technology, computers, and stuff like that. So everything I know, I just, I just stayed home and educated myself. Yeah. Right? And uh, so... Uh, so I would like, um, at the time you kind of feel like, you know, everyone else is out doing this, doing that, and I'm home, educate myself. And, and there's almost a feeling like, you know, I, I, I suck. However, once you fill yourself with all that stuff, you become this amazing, you know what I mean? Look, look at all the different things you could do now because you stayed home yeah, and decided to study things and learn things and teach yourself things. A diploma is a paper. You can teach yourself. You can know the same stuff that someone that graduated in a brick building. Absolutely. I, th I think the universities are one of the biggest scams in the country, to be honest uh -huh. with you. Well, I am a Pittsburghese person. But the backwoods of Beaver County. So, yeah, you're right. Like, <laughs> plan my certificate. Hey, hand that over. I got to get my bonfire started. Yeah, you're in the right. Yard. I don't know. Hey, listen, hey, nothing better than experience. Nothing right. better than experience. I got an analogy for that too. Yeah. So. So do you? All right. So for your for your um your episodes on on YouTube, is, are they anything that you sit around, you think about, you kind of put an idea together, or is this just you say, you know what, this seems like an awesome thing. 
turn on the camera and, and go. It's basically just how I normally am in real life. Yeah. Behind closed doors, pretty much. And I can tell so, you, you know, there's no shtick or not. When you're on, you're talking. It's Jay. This is you yeah. Know. So how I do the videos is I really don't know what the hell heck how I'm going to say on it. To be honest, I just put that uh, video. I probably talk off camera more than I do on. Right. I definitely do. But I had to record by an I talk next to you know it's thirty minutes later because my phone yeah. cuts right. off and then uh I just got it and I'll be like damn I didn't get everything I wanted so I record again I don't like to edit my stuff out so right. if I say something stupid I leave that shit in yeah that's right. the best part <laughs> that, that's kind of like the best way to do it too so it's 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 real it's not cheap. And filtered it's, it's like raw. here's what it is exactly yeah. and they raw. know that while they're they're viewing it they they, they realize yeah. that it's it's raw because it's kind of like here too like yeah, polished yeah. you know yeah. like here we really don't edit anything no First, my, my my 30 second pauses well yeah those pause. get edited but no like uh-huh. like he's saying it's better just to get it all out there keep it original yeah yeah because if i gotta edit it it just feels like um i'm, I'm like hiding something yeah. or something. i like to be hey man famous man my best friend my best friend from back in the day, he was he was around before I was born. But uh, he he said the truth will set you free. As long as you say the truth, you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just hope I just speak freely, no filter. My language now. When I do the biblical things, people are like, Oh my god, you're such a hypocrite because you swear. You're right. I forget what the scripture I actually have a, a a scripture straight from the Bible that protects me from that. As long as I swear to motivate people and turn them to God. <laughs> Okay. It works. It's in Ephesians. I forget what book and chapter. I'm so hurt. <laughs> chapter. Yeah, it's there. It's, it's in one of my videos. I'm going to start displaying that now. Yeah, I'm going to swear more now. I have a there's disclaimer not, video too, but I, I just never. There, there, there's nothing better than loopholes. Have you, uh, yeah. Have you watched the movie on Netflix, like the history of swearing, or what's it called? It, it's the uh, history of swearing, and it goes I, through like the actual swear words, word. the origin, why it started, and what we've turned it into, and why we look at them as taboo i'm gonna get into that now yeah, it, it's really really well done it. i gotta check that out definitely yeah do you so, like nicholas cage at all oh heck yeah he's he, he's, he's the main he's the narrator for yeah he does so you can imagine how he does it's awesome check it out definitely but um wait what was it what was what was nick cage doing he um, narrates for the movie that's on Netflix. It's called that, like the history, history of swear words. words. Yeah, let me tell you about the history of swearing. Like a documentary. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah they have like it's... comedians, actors, and actual like um, linguists on there and historians. It's... Yeah. So it's really good because they dig deep into the roots of all the words, which is why I do let my seven year old swear. <laughs> oh, you do? So we're oh, putting okay. that on the air. <laughs> Oh no, no, there's there's rules. There's you have to rules. put it on the board what word you can say and what words you can't and the words that you can't get shredded in paper and you're no longer allowed to say them anymore. And you can't say them towards us. Like he can say them to us, but not towards us. You know what that sounds like? Something similar, Mr. Garrison on <laughs> South Mr. Park. Mr. Mrs. Garrison on South Park. <laughs> we can't say shit as you took a poop, but yeah. you can say shit as yeah. yes, shit head. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he had it back. It was like, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it was awesome. funny. But yeah, with with my videos, I mean, I oh my god, I messed around with the green screen. I just spent almost hundred bucks, and I just didn't get it right. Yeah. I say forget that. I went to Walmart, got a got a fifteen dollar bucket of green paint, non glossy, and a Dollar Tree paint drop paint brushes because I'm just cheap like that. I painted my wall. And that's it that's how I get paint? the bat. Oh my god! Really? Hell yeah! Yep. Yeah. Oh wow! I could so, sometimes ask. cheaper's better. Yeah. Yeah. And if I want to get my feet in my videos, like that SpongeBob and Recovery one, yeah, I should tell you how I came up with that one. But uh, I just put that old green screen stuff I blew my money on for nothing. It actually <laughs> came used. So I just right. put it on the floor, walk on it. Yeah. So it's neat to have, though. You know what I mean? Any, anything you want to do from now on, where you may need that instead of being stationary, where you have your wall painted. That's you, what I don't like is stationary. Yeah. So you could take the blanket, you know, the wherever you go with you and do you know different things. Um, you want a good example of my upcoming videos sooner yeah, or later? Yeah, Flying car machine. I'm gonna turn my minivan into 
a, a minivan version of the DeLorean. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's you know, going to be awesome. Like flux capacitor and everything. <laughs> like Because I do all this science stuff. People say I'm crazy and stuff. Right. I'm, I'm crazy good like a Pop-Tart is right. my slogan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy good like a pop Pop Tarts are so good, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, right. crazy. it's crazy like right. Doc Brown, not crazy like Ted Kaczynski. And just like right. a Pop Tart. Exactly. Just like a Pop Tart, completely harmless. Yeah. So I just, just the way I I, I don't know, things. I burned the roof of my mouth on a Pop Tart once. True. Yeah. So, so, um, I haven't toasted a Pop Tart in probably 25 uh, years. Same here. Every time I take I it out the box, I, I tear the ends off, and I either throw them out or eat them first, and then I enjoy the, the icing yes. with the middle, you know? Yes. I'm going to start a fire at my workplace. You did? Yep. I'm out at a... Don't surprise. <laughs> just not surprise me at all. I'm out at a Jolly Rancher in a rehab. It was uh, in a microwave. Dude was yeah. pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Can you uh, imagine how sticky that guy was uh, getting hot yeah. trying to clean that shit? Well, I was trying new... Um, every time I end up... I've been to 21 rehabs. Oh, and wow. count on who knows how many times in jail. Yeah. Only three men once or two. So that was the run, so I wouldn't go in jail. Right. <laughs> you know, right. Gotta hide out. Absolutely. HIPAA laws will protect you from jail. Right. Yeah. So um I'm not gonna explain that though. A lot of <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Because I usually have an argument that excuse me, that we don't learn our our rights and laws in school. That's not that's nothing that they teach you. And isn't that yeah. insane? Because that is the main um uh fiber of our society yeah, it takes yeah. you, it takes a lawyer four, four years of undergrad then four years of law school to learn the law takes six months to be a police officer and then us citizens are supposed to know all the laws you on our own hundred million americans running around who have no clue what the law is and the laws That's change true. and no wonder police are and they can know, change like the, they are yeah and they can a new law a new statute can come out a day mm-hmm. and that can override this law can override that law and you're supposed to know this on our own. You know, they made us say the Pledge of Allegiance every day for 13 straight years. Not teaching you what it actually means. Right. And what it actually means is the important part. Yeah, I can never understand them when they sing that. I'm like, what, what the hell are they saying? You're right. <laughs> you know, like some, some, maybe not the Pledge of Allegiance, but some parts. I'm yeah. like, what did they say? No. I'm like, I need like closed <laughs> caption. Right, right. Yeah, uh, I'm with you on closed caption. America and national yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Absolutely. They want to swear by the Bible in the courtroom, but they don't want to have to do the same thing. You're right. I don't think the judges actually know the law. They just judge the law, and it's up to the lawyer to bring that law's awareness to the judge for the judge to make yeah. it aware. I don't know if that's true. Like some places, you don't have to be a lawyer to be a judge. You no. you just run, and then you win the election, and then you're a judge. I and think, that's that's know. the scary I part. I think that that guy, the um, the guy who was in Beaver Falls forever, Livingston. Okay. I think he was a police officer, and then he ran after he retired from being a cop to run for the magistrate well, I'd near Falls. Have, to have some sort of knowledge. Like it's probably, Not really. Yeah. If you can win, if you can win an election. But like, I mean, you know, to run for print, don't you have to have like something you, under huh? your belt, like no. two years associate of? No. Mm-mm. For for like what judge or president or? Well, then I'm going to be judge. Sorry. Oh yeah. Just, I, I usually we don't... now learn today from the from Jason so far that we can become rich from <laughs> scamming people. Oh, you can, and we can become judges. I, I... Sweet. <laughs> yeah, you're opening new doors. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I'm, like I always say, leave your mind open. One thing I I, I see is wrong that, that that um I see so many unhappy people out there. Yes, and I think it's because the world has closed their mind because they're stuck with their nine to five job, this yeah. and that daily, taking taking care of the kids. Everybody's and miserable. If they're on such a routine. Right. Because, I mean, you kind of got to. You got to right. make money and that. See, like, I, when you get on a routine, you get stuck in those ways and you think, oh, that's all there is to life. Right. It don't get much better. Maybe a vacation and that's it. It gets, there, it could be so much better. It's just, yeah. The, the world corrupts. Mankind Absolutely. corrupts man. That's right there. That's why I stick with God personally or right. the Bible. And I am just free. Yeah. Free. And as long as I don't tell a lie. And I mean, not everything I say is 100% correct. Well, we're I'm, still flesh. You yeah. Know what I, I mean, I like I always tell people, well, I, I tell people if I make a mistake, like in my Bible, science, or anything, just right. correct me, you know? So the people that I'm a fan of are the people that, that make the attempt. The honest attempt to learn both science and yeah. biblically. That yeah. those are the people that I truly respect because <laughs> you know what you're talking about. You know, if I'm gonna sit here and argue with somebody about something, 
you know, I, I respect the person who knows both sides in the conversation opposed to somebody who's just coming at you with, with one angle. Yeah. You know, and um, I just think it's a much more productive conversation. Well, when, when I started that God and science debate stuff, like my last few videos, yeah. that's just me. Uh, when I make YouTube videos, it all comes down to that. That's just me expressing my feelings. Right. I got some stuff to say. And I just, or I'm going to go on a venture. I just say, hey, why not? Because it's just me and my dog. Right. That's all it is. So the social life is I go to the bar every once in a while. You know what they say? You meet them at the bar, you lose them at the bar. Right. So, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> so uh, I, I'd rather bump into somebody in the middle of a woods at Brady's Run Park or something, which I go to. Right. And I just love it. I forget where I was trolling off to there, but. Yeah. Just to step back to the judge thing. Okay. Uh, not every type of judge requires a law degree and to become a lawyer, but if you want to go up to higher courts, you, you have to be a part of the uh, American Bar Association. So you want to be a so magistrate. I didn't... In New Brighton, I I don't know that, but some judges you do need the law degree, some you don't. I'm sorry, yeah. I just wanted to clarify so some that. Some judges they don't need to know the law. Yeah, some judges yeah. you don't need to have the. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah that's, that's what it that's sounds what like. Yeah. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I just did a quick on a quick Google search. So if you can't trust us it. and Google, I don't know who to trust. Yeah, <laughs> um, I didn't mean to sidebar the conversation. I just wanted to clarify I, I was that. I the impression that that, that longtime magistrate he actually passed away. That Livingston, he was an officer, and then he. You know, he became the judge. So, the, there's probably like the lower courts and yeah. stuff. You don't need it, but the higher ones, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Huh. How long have you been doing your videos, Jay? Uh, just as start, it's kind of like after everyone started panicking after when the pandemic started. Yeah, yeah. Because I think I made a COVID. I'll never do another COVID one again because you, YouTube gave me a, um, a warning. Ugh. Because I talked about the flu shot. I wasn't saying to take it or not to. I was explaining the science behind right. it. The truth of the science can be scary to people who, people, yeah. a lot of people are oblivious to the reality of what's going on in the world. See, me, I self taught. So I know the inner workings yeah. of certain things. Right. And I see, like, if I stayed in school, I would just, I wouldn't see the inner working of things. Like, um, Hidden agendas and the truth yeah. of things We're that are hidden. Be all the time. Yeah, I understand what goes in, what yeah. goes on behind closed doors. Like those politicians. All, I mean, I don't like to talk politics, but if I had it my way, I don't know. I think it. Uh, I mean, I'd probably mess everything up. But I would just <laughs> like fire them all first of all. You want to go on a vacation? There's your permanent one, okay? Right. And I take all the bums off the street under the under the bridges. The ones that ain't on drugs, You're right. but the ones that just. Don't have family that's to help them, shit. and yeah. that's why they live. Put them in there. Get them because they weren't born with a silver spoon. They know what it's like to struggle, and they right. might know a better way to help. Because what they're stuck in, if they're like they don't struggle with money, that it's like nothing better than experience. If you if you was born with a silver spoon in your mouth, you don't know what it's like to struggle. Right. And <laughs> and you, right. And they, they, well, they, I'd like to see like people who say wages well, don't need to be increased and this and that. Try living like on our wages. As you watch, your pay has been the same, and you're watching your rent increase year yeah. over year, groceries increasing year over yeah. year. It's like, no, it, it's easy if you have multi millions in your bank account. Yeah. yeah but when you're right. living like, you know, paycheck to paycheck and you have no bailout coming to you, well, good luck. Yeah. Right. You, you know what would have sped up the stimulus? That if I was president, they'd have a decision. People get a hell of a lot more than 600 bucks. That was ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And then they oh stretched it out for, you know, and then that didn't even pay six months ago. Yeah. They said, oh, you, they yeah, you're going to, we're going to, we're talking about it in June. You know, next thing you know, it was like, okay, sometime in the fall. All right. Right around Christmas. That's $600. And then you're watching, it's nothing. then you're watching like other countries. Like here's $2,000 a month until, until. You know, you yeah. just get until they're done spending their money. And yeah, yeah. Right. we're gonna keep giving it to you until we can get back to how we were. So here's two thousand a month, whether you need it or not. And some people are like, I don't need it, and they were sending it back. Like here, shit, give me that two thousand whether yeah, I need it or not. Back. You know, I ain't sending anything back. But like it's we're like watching, like you know, we got twelve hundred dollars. Then what, it's our money they're giving back. Yeah, to it's, like, exactly. it's every, it's every, like it's a miracle. Yeah. It's everything that we have paid since we started paying taxes that we're getting back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like give me my money. And I heard—I <laughs> yeah. don't know if it's true—that 1.9 trillion American people only got two percent. See, what I think is, my grandma always told me, two's a company, but three's a crowd. When you got 200 people want to get something in there, yeah, <laughs> object, 
object. And then it's like, if I don't get my money for a nuclear bomb or something, y'all ain't getting nothing. Yeah, they're ridiculous. <laughs> and then and then monkey see, monkey do. And then you have 200 people you got to satisfy. Yeah. I mean, uh, only so many have to yeah, vote. It's, it's like... It's like the the majority of the pricks, I should say. And it's like they're all sitting in a room together, so you're 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 more um, willing to communicate and give the people that are around you what you want. Meanwhile, there's 300 million Americans out there that need this. Yeah. People and, and, well, they're like, well, you know what? They're not here, so fuck it. Let's just take care of like, us, and we'll give. Like, them I'm not going to help out the people in your district unless you help out the five people in my district by building, you know, this little museum to this pig that lived here five years ago. I'm not going to give you. I'm not going to allow money be put into this bill to help people over there. No. I say it's just. I hate to change oh. the subject. I don't even realize <laughs> if I'm changing the subject. But you brought up a 53 little pig story. Oh yeah. What's that all about? Okay, so my fit. So what I do is like how I do, like how I said everything that I talk about stems off from the Bible. Like right. how I come up with telling my stories. Right. It's like kind of like how uh, Joseph translated the King Pharaoh's dreams. Okay. So, uh, so I tell a story in the form of an analogy, like how God gave Joseph a dream, You're right? And then I tell what it means in real life. That's basically what I do mainly. Yeah. Um. I, that's why. That's what I started my YouTube channel for. Okay. But it has led into so many more, especially with that green screen. I could do anything. I could <laughs> drop out of outer space and You're save right. myself before I smack off the ground. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm doing literally a, anything oh, with that. I'm doing a flying car. That's my new one. I I'm coming up with that. Car. I'm going to. I got all this junk. I want to get out of my garage, like a bunch of clothes. My sister's boyfriend gives me. I, I can't do those collar shirts. Too <laughs> I'm too old. To, you know me, yeah. little Jay from back in the day. Absolutely. But, I, so I was going to donate all that stuff. So I'm going to fly my drone up in the sky to the, so many different points. It's going to take a while. I'm going to get my way to the Goodwill in Rochester, PA. And I'm gonna donate some. It's gonna be like a free donation video. Uh -huh. But and that and that's that's what's gonna get me to turn that minivan to DeLorean. Yeah. yeah. But um, so that's my next. I'll, I'll probably never do it, or I might. I don't know. I'm all over the place. <laughs> right. My mind is 100 say, miles an hour. I was gonna say it sounds like you have like a thousand ideas that you want to do. Yeah, like the squirrel on my YouTube channel. <laughs> That re that's my spirit animal. <laughs> Nobody ever asked me that. I want someone to ask me a question. I was like, leave it a comment. I don't get no comments on you it. You know what? I will be watching a lot. Now that we talk to you, I'm very, very uh, interested in getting in there and see what you're doing. Okay. And and uh I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be learning a lot about you here for the next couple of days. Okay. Yeah. I'm make sure we like everything and get you. Oh, I ain't going anywhere until I tell that 53 little pig. Let's yeah. hear the 53 yeah. pigs. Yeah. I can't right. wait. Uh, so that's gonna take about Five, maybe ten I minutes. Do any pigs get hurt? Because I love them. Oh, there's no pigs or wolves hurt in the process. <laughs> <laughs> no, no pigs or wolves hurt in the process. But, but the, 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 there is there there's a lot of hurt in the story. Okay. All right, All right. We're feeling ready. wise, no physical. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm like yeah. All right, we're okay. Ready. So hopefully I don't mess this up. Said you could edit this, right? Absolutely, All possibly. Right. I only, no, no, I, got you. <laughs> I only told this story publicly to like a church or two. Okay. And probably like three times in rehabs over the years. So I made this back in 2017, I think. Can I get, am I allowed to smoke over here? Well, of course. Because I ran out of cigarettes when I was at the bar. Yeah. I only had one drink. I said, I can't. I was going to do a shot of Jim Bean because I was oh. rushing. I was rushing time. I don't have cigarettes. So I got to buy one. <laughs> Told you I was cheap. Shit. <laughs> I just, Wait, the, right? The one bar I go to ain't got no cigarette machine. I'm like, oh. like in this area, that's all you see. You go to the bar. The bar it's the bar, the, bar the bar and the ATM right next to each other. Like, yeah. it's telling you, like, you want to take it? No, because now it's. You go to the bar, you got your ATM, your cigarette machine. Now you got the quote unquote skill games, not gambling, skill games to play. Yeah. yeah it's not surprising that you're at one that did not have cigarettes. I'm so surprised with the technology. I didn't put it all in one machine. All yeah, right. the, put it in the corner, boom. Right? Good to go. Yeah, here, just put your card in. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know when we're done. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you your card back. I had, well, well. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt the show. Oh, no, no. Keep yeah, out, did. dude. This I was is... just going to bum a cigarette off you. Oh, you went to go get some. Uh, you... <laughs> went to the store? <laughs> oh, 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 oh y'all guys are cheap, too. You were your own? Oh, God, I'm going to cause a fire. This, this, that's going to, like, you get the hot ashes all over, your, all over too? Yeah. Oh, I man. Did. So that's why I quit. I got 
I wasn't worried about lung disease. I was worried about burning myself. Your clothes. Yeah. Yeah, you walk around looking like you're on drugs. Dude, dark, like, dark people, they yeah. fall asleep with a cigarette and burn. Like, no, it's just roll up. Dude, I, I, I'll sit there when I was. Thank you. I'd gain, when I smoked, I'd sit there and play video games. Forget to have a cigarette there. I looked down, it burning a hole through my shirt. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm done. Well, we're going to have a fire out here. You didn't have to dash. Is that a garbage can? Yeah, all the way in this corner. Oh my gosh. You're good. You're good, Jeff. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah. Okay. So, 53 little pigs. Okay. So, it's a 100% true story told in the form of an analogy. And I'll probably, like I said, I've probably told this about five, six times. Um, but I've run through my mind all the time, like here and there. So, um, it's a story about addiction. And, well, I'll explain everything after. I'll, I'll, tell you in detail the explanation of the analogy so it goes like this okay how did i start this been a while so there's a land out there there's a land called the land of the pigs these were walking talking friendly loving pigs and then hey don't don't because i'll start crying on my own story no no you're okay though you're okay um but yeah they're loving caring pigs good people and they live happily just like us humans right but on the outskirt that I like to call outside of this land where the darkness is, there's a there's a um a wolf, there, and the legend of the and, and the wolf would always come to the land of the pigs, and he would take advantage of the people of the of the land. He would go to the first little piggy's house, and he would not, the first little piggy's house was made out of brick, red brick to be exact. I'll tell you why at the end. And uh, so he knocks, and he knocks. And the pig and the pig answers the door with much fear, fear in its face, and he says to the little pig, he's like, he he the the, I should probably start. Can I start this over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to. Did take, you make this up? This is all your. Yeah, I okay. just didn't tell it in a while. Yeah, yeah, go. So for it. okay, I should have. I didn't know I was going to do this. So. But um, I'm going to just go back to the first pig. Yeah, yeah. you can edit it like that. Hey, oh yeah. Okay. That's why I should start editing myself too. But, <laughs> okay. so, so the wolf goes into the land of the pigs and he knocks at the first little piggy's house. The first little piggy's house was made out of brick, red brick to be exact. So, um, and when he knocks, he waits and the little pig answers the door and with much fear in its eyes, it looks at the wolf and asks the wolf what he wants. And the wolf tells the little pig what he wants and the pig gives the wolf what he wants. And the wolf takes it and he goes on immediately to the second little piggy's house. He knocked, and the second little piggy's house is made out of gold, solid gold to be exact. So the wolf knocks there, but the wolf knocked lightly and gently and respectfully. And the, and the second little piggy answers the door, and he asks the wolf what he wants. And with much respect, the wolf answers back what he wants. And the pig gives him what he wants, but not for free with an exchange. And the wolf gets what he wants. And then he goes off back into the darkness. And what he, what he has, and a and time goes by, and another time goes by, and he has nothing. He returns back to the land of the pigs. He goes to the third little piggy's house. Now, this house was special. This house was made out of light, bright light. And the wolf knocks at the, when the wolf walked up to the door, right before the wolf knocked at the third little piggy's door, it just opens up freely, like he didn't even have to knock. And, he, and there's a little pig that answers, welcoming him in. And the wolf says, if I could get inside this one little piggy's house of light, I could take everything that he has. So he goes into the little piggy's house. But as he notices, there's oh, shoot, one, two, there's 50 more pigs in, the, in this place. They were singing, dancing, singing, having a good, jolly old time. And the wolf said, the wolf knew he could not overpower all these pigs, right? There's 51 in there, right? So the wolf said, and, and then one of the little pigs came up to the wolf. Gave him a seat, the wolf sat, and the wolf was, as the wolf was watching these pigs, trying to think and scheme in his head how he could take everything from these pigs. Something happened to him that day. Even today, he don't know what happened. But as he, all his hate, anger, just turned into love and happiness because he's seen these pigs enjoying themselves. And he smiled upon them, and he decided to join them. And when he did, he came to realize he loved life. And... So after that, it was time to close up. Everyone had to leave. So as time goes by, the wolf would always return to the third piggy's house. He would also go to the, 
he would always go to the third piggy's house because that's where he found happiness. And like a battery, you're going to deplete once in a while, like later on. And when he feels himself being unhappy, he goes to the house of light. He gets recharged to get another day or whatever through. But he's very careful never to return to the second little piggy's house, for he knows what he has gained, he will also he would surely lose. But every day he would always go to the to the first little piggy's house with the red brick house, and he would always try to be friends and apologize. And he knew that he could not ask for forgiveness and trust. He could ask, that he would never ask for it, but he would just show, and in time he would receive that forgiveness and trust by the first pig. Because he can't expect them to trust and forgive him. He ruined this first pig's life for 10 years. There's a whole history behind this. True story. And But ever since then, he always stays at that house, the third little piggy's house, and remains peaceful with them. Never to return again back into the darkness. The end. That's, that's, a, that's interesting. Um, if you have questions before I explain it, go ahead. Or... No, go ahead and explain. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the analogy, so that's a one hundred percent true story of my life, um, with um, find, finding my way out of addiction. So the wolf is me, the addict. Okay. The first little piggy's house is my mother, because she. We actually. I mean, I we I live the downstairs from them right now, and she. We live in a brick red brick house, so that's why it's a red brick house, and. Uh, I would used to knock at her bedroom door in the middle of the night, $20, car keys, just BS, BS, because that's what addicts do. Mm -hmm. Family are the best enablers for an addict. It keeps an addict killing themselves, basically. So that's the first little pig. The second little pig is the drug dealer. And this is why the wolf knocked respectfully. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because when that dealer got what that addict wants, you're going to respect him because he might cut you off, right? Yeah. So you got, you're going to run to the store to McDonald's. It's going to take you 30 minutes. You can't get high for 30 minutes longer. You're going to do it because you want that, what he got. You're right. He got control, you know? So that's why the wolf was careful not to return to that place because he would surely lose everything. That's called a relapse in reality <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean uh, i'm a chronic relapser too believe right. me i got stories on that but um the third house was the church that's why it's made a light and still to this day i don't know what it is when i read my bible when i pray to god when i think about who was jesus why are you saying all this crazy stuff but he made sense and uh Still, I don't know how to explain and it. And it doesn't make sense until you until you open up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To, to an, an average person, if you're reading, you know, these these passages, you're like, this is, a, you know, this is insane talk. This is crazy talk. Yeah. But when you do, you open up and, and you accept it. It, it. it makes it starts making sense. And then you're starting to realize that it's making sense. And the more that you realize, then the more it keeps making sense in, in, in return. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I understand it, that. I didn't understand the Bible. I like like I said, I didn't understand the Bible at all at first. Right. Until that story in Genesis when King Pharaoh's dream was revealed yeah. by Joseph. Oh my God, that was so crazy. That's how I come up with all my analogies right. from that story. Then my favorite story in the Bible is uh, shoot. Matthew, I think 13. Yes. The spreading of the seeds. This yes. is the spreading of the seeds is one story that Jesus told plain and simple, but only to his disciples in secret. And I'm like, oh, now I get yeah. it. And I always realized, now I realize why Jesus um, speaks in parables. Spoke in, par spoke in parables, yeah. If you're going to describe heaven, if you're going to talk about something wonderful that the body, the human body doesn't have senses to understand, there's, there's no English or language on earth to explain how wonderful God is. Therefore, he had to tell in parables. That's just the best way yeah. to get people to understand God. But even then, it's it's that's it's so hard to believe. But right. I mean, shoot, listen, they we're so far gone from what we're, we were meant to be. We we're we're so um, draped in 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 the world in the in the in the life of flesh that that's all we were ever taught, and that over thousands of years can certainly dilute the original message. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we, we, we look at things different now. We speak different now. We think different now. We do things different. 
so it's difficult for us to pull ourselves from everything we know and ever known yeah. and try to understand something that got diluted through history. Diluted is the word, too. It, right. They miss so many details in schools like Columbus. You know Columbus was a vicious warrior. He was a rapist, a uh, murderer. You know about he never mass said, genocide. He never, what's that? Mass genocide. Yeah, mass genocide. You know he never stepped foot in the USA, right? Really? Nope. Yeah, it was just down in uh, what is what the uh, South Cuba, Americas? I believe. Like, like Cuba, uh, like yeah, like the yeah. Caribbean's, like the Cuba around Caribbean. Hawaii, but not Hawaii. Not right. No, no, no down by uh, what's that? Cuba, right? I don't know the map. Yeah, it yeah. was down yeah, south there of Florida. Somewhere. Yeah, that area. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know what? He could have saved the they, wait. He. Okay, so if he's going to prove the Earth is round, all he had to do is read his Bible. No, he, he they they knew the Earth was round. He thought it was smaller than like what it bird. was. Yeah, because they because um God, I forget the uh, the ancient Egyptian who figured out the uh, distance and he figured out the circumference. Columbus thought it was smaller, and he would be able to you know, there's no land over there. We can sell to India faster. Yeah, and he was just trying to prove that it was smaller, and everyone's like, no, 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 you're wrong. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even know where to start. How do you measure the Earth? I mean, like, it was actually you without a took, drone. It was you put a he took a stick. I want to say it was in. Oh God, I'm going to get this so wrong. I want to say in Cairo. I had a stick there, and or, the sun was at, at noon. Measured the length of it, the shadow. Then he went down to. Another city, I want to say, oh God, I'm probably get this wrong, but Memphis, it's the one that's coming to mind, and did the same thing. Knew the distance between the two cities, and then knew the length of the shadows, and was able to work out the math how it was. I probably got the cities wrong, but I knew, I do know it involved the like sun. The concept, yeah, okay. the sun and the two sticks, and the distance okay. between the two cities. He knew how far they were, and they were able to get the math right. I know one thing. When, was Chris, when we learned about Christopher Columbus. He was smiling. We were coloring pictures. He was no. hugging Indians. So deceiving, right? Yeah. <laughs> the turkeys were walking around smiling. Like, it, it was... Yeah, and then you, then you actually learned what actually happened. Yeah. He probably treated that turkey better than he did the people on yeah. the island. Yeah, like, like, yeah. like, he was... Right. He was... Like, we're taught, like, oh, he goes back to Spain and Portugal, and he's a hero. Like, once, like, the king and queen found out what he did, they were kind of, like, appalled by how he treated everyone. Really? Yeah, they, they were like kind of wanted, after a while, wanted nothing to do with him. That's interesting. Yes. They, they had they had the the truth of it a lot, too. Oh. oh, my God, don't get me started where Santa Claus comes from. That's a <laughs> demon of the North. You know that, right? Dude, what is it? Demon of the North. Demon Santa of Claus. the North. What's that? No. We got time? Yeah, you got, well, we got time for one more. Go I'll, ahead. I'll, I'll break this down in a nutshell. We'll yeah. go Christmas style, right? All right. All right, so originality Okay, first of all, Christians hated Christmas back then. They actually banned it, I think, in England. It was a pagan holiday. So what Christmas originally was is, well, it wasn't called Christmas. It was around winter time, around the, dude, they had, like, months or weeks they, of well, darkness. Yeah, in, like, the solstice. And everything. Solstice. I can't pronounce it. Yeah. You gotta say it for me. Solstice. The solstice. Yeah, I'm yeah, thinking like that's the guy with the speech spices. impediment. <laughs> yeah, that's where I was too. The salsa? Yeah, salsa. You hungry too? Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love Mexican. But um, ex yeah, exactly what you said. So I'm not sure what the days were, but the thing was because there was so much mischief on the street because that was a time to party, man. And one, I forget which culture, Greeks, Romans, whatever, they had one god named something. He was like the wine and sex and partying because uh i know the, Ro the romans had the the saturnalia that was their winter festival and then they had god i forget the i forget the god they had the the, the the god of wine and partying. yeah that's what i'm talking about yeah so people was getting drunk and you ever been to a bar lately i mean imagine a bar being on all over the streets You're that right. was, that's what was going on i guess so the only plant life that survived through the cold winter salsa, salsa, salsa. <laughs> what he like said, salsa. the only the pine tree, the the Christmas tree. Yep. They thought it had magical powers. That's why we have Christmas trees today. And that would be, I think, that was coming from the Germanic myth right there too, because they were up north with all the pines. I want to say the Germanic. Yeah, the only thing that survived. So they brought them into their homes, hoping it would protect them from the evils. It, it wasn't evils out there. Well, they called it evils. I call it a bunch of drunks being stupid. Yeah, right, <laughs> you know, right? Just saying. I mean, I, I, I back 
then, shit, I would have been one of them. <laughs> I still am. <laughs> who, who knows? I might be one of them after this. <laughs> but um, the thing is that, so the Christians hated it because it wasn't believing God and Jesus. So, you know, how they are. I mean, I'm a Christian myself, but it's like, you know, give the message and let the people decide. Yeah. Is what I say. That's why I make YouTube videos. Click on, click off. Because I talk about God at the bar. People be like, Psst, you know. Yeah. But um, the thing is, so they bought the trees in to protect them from the evils out there. And they had anything with light was special to them because they went through all this darkness for a long time. And um, so that, that's why that's where you get the star on the tree. The light up star. Wow. That's to represent the light. That's your magical power and stuff. And the tree represents that you'll be safe. The star is like magical, something like that. Yeah. And then um, the wreaths on the door, that's to keep people from like breaking in your house the way I see it. That's to protect you from the <laughs> from the evils on the street. So right, it protects right. your house. That's what wreaths are for, for Chris. Well, now we use them for whatever. You're right. I wonder what mistletoes were for, but I didn't learn nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, makes you wonder. Probably a lot more than kissing. Just saying. But, um, so, the thing with that, so that's the whole, so, so when the Christians tried banning this, it was either the Romans or Greeks. It sounds like you might so know I this. So I looked it up. The Greek is Dionysus. The Roman is Bacchus. Yeah, but, yeah, they're Bacchus and they had the Bacchanalia. Okay. Well, was one, also a festival. One of these, one of these, um, what do they call them? Cultures, Romans, Greek, whatever. Civilizations. Yeah. They would put the Christians. They would gather a group of Christians up, put them in those arenas back in the day, and they would beat like a like a lion or some kind of crazy animal, starve it, and later on release it on the Christians. That's how they handled their differences back then. You're right. Thank God things are different today. Yeah. So I don't know. I calmed down a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gun so, violence, and you know. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what happened, but just like the basic thing is, I guess some Christians spoke up and they's like, "Listen, we can't have you killing us. Like, let's just." I don't know what they did. Like, you go your way, we'll go our way. We ain't going to try to ban because they was trying to ban Christmas. And that's probably why they got you can't. I mean, Christmas is probably like trying to ban uh. Christmas, I guess. <laughs> I can't think of well, anything like, better like, than that. It's like what they did. That it was like, like Christmas. You can see it has all the different festivals from that time drawn yeah. into one, and that was the easiest way to blend in and get accepted to the cultures. Was okay. We'll take from you. We'll take from you. Take from you. Take from you. Take from you, and make it into one. Yeah, and then and then when they do when they got to settle like that, like battle the differences in religions. They got to, like, that's when you start, I think, in, like, the religious practices, like um, Christmas, right. for example. So the Christians couldn't beat them. They couldn't beat the other beliefs. So they wasn't going to go out like that. So they had to join them. And I believe that's why they say Jesus. You know how someone's born one day, but you celebrate it some other yeah, time of the year? Absolutely. That's what the Christians are doing, I think. That's yeah. my opinion. But I, I, mean, I would say that would... Set, that's what it yeah. seems like to me. I only know so much of this, so you know. Yeah. But um, I believe that they wanted a part of that time of the year because that was a big deal. You know what yeah, I mean? The, so they went through Jesus up in there. That's yeah, that's like like the Saturnalia festival. That's their one. That was like the Romans' big winter festival. Okay. And so it was the big superpower at the time were the Romans. And if you want to convert people best chance you have is to get the roman so oh you have a festival at this time hey guess what so do we yeah so it's easy to get everything so okay ours is like this well ours is kind of like yours too and it's at the same time and that's how you can get the people coming over to your side yeah I, that's, I, that's one of the ways they did it is that is that how they said kind of yeah it kind of like it was like yeah, there's a long sounds like corruption yeah, cause you took, well you have to go right. like the first christian emperor constantine that was like a huge thing because all before constantine everyone was pagan yeah constantine won the battle of the three emperors he <clears throat> became christian so then the christianity became more accepted in the roman empire then you gotta go all the way to, after that to the council of nicaea where you codify all of Christianity, and then the Second Council of Nicaea to codify it again. So it's a long, long, winding road. Yeah, oh, God. To get, to get, to, to, get to Christmas 2021. <laughs> well, I could, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the presents to be open. Up. I know, right? 
I would like to end that hit uh the history of Christmas real quick with Santa Claus. Everyone gotta know about Santa Claus. This right. is crazy. You ready for this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so here's the history of Santa Claus. He's considered the demon of the north, evil spirit of the north, North Pole, you know, where he makes the toys yeah. and stuff. Uh-huh. Okay. He wears he doesn't wear a red suit, he has red fur. He's a red furry demon of the north, they called him back then. And he rode a sleigh. Sound familiar? Yeah. Anyone want to take a guess what drew drew his slab? Reindeer. No. Nope. Wolves. Winged flying snakes or oh, something. Really? Winged <laughs> flying creatures or something like that. They have wings. They look like snakes. I've seen a picture, but they're, they're just trying to put an image in your head. Yeah. Right? That's right. But winged flying creatures is the way they explained it. And the parents of those times would tell their little children, don't you go outside after night. St. Nicholas. St. Nick. Because his name was Nick or something like right. that. I, uh-huh. Wait, I, I forget how that went. You should be able to look that up. But <laughs> they would tell their children, don't go outside late at night. St. Nicholas is going to take you. He don't give toys. I guess he would kidnap kids with that knapsack. That's what that shit was yes. for. You remember that? You heard, remember him? That's what he would do. He's more like a Krumpus than a Santa Claus. Yes. Okay, yes. That's what he that's, is. That's what I'm thinking. So I think Krumpus may be more of the original Santa Claus. And the St. Nicholas dude from like back in the day you see on History Channel, I don't even know what that shit's about, but it yeah. goes back further than that. Right. He got that shit idea. But um, I don't know. If you ask me, sometimes I'll be like, man, I think a businessman changed the game and turned Christmas they, into Christmas. Yeah, like, oh, funny games about they actually did. I want to say um, like the Santa Claus that we know now, that was like an ad campaign. Huh. I wouldn't doubt from, I forget what, what company, but it was like an ad campaign. Yeah. And you're not going to advertise the demons of people. You're yeah, going to take right. a bad yeah. thing and turn it into a money good thing. Let's thing. put a fat, jolly white guy out there. You know, yeah, like, there's nothing more. But uh, not this demon that looks like it should be on like an Iron Maiden cover. Yeah, right. <laughs> I right. do. I do like Christmas, but I think all of that it just it, it, it takes like the true meaning of Christmas, like Jesus. That's what it is for me. I, right. I like presents. I'm a 38. I ain't getting a damn present. Yeah. They don't matter to me no more. But what? I do like how they celebrate Christmas because it's a good-hearted thing, despite the originality where it all came from. At least they turn a negative thing into a positive thing. Right. Kids love it. They get toys. It, it, like guys. Every every culture has that that winter festival where everyone gets together. I know. Yeah. And that's, those are the best things. Around Christmas, like, yeah. we had to put our shoes outside the door so that the fairy could come and put candy in our huh. shoes. That's so you wouldn't catch your parents doing yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't see through that door. Right. Yeah, they put you to sleep. You like don't never know it was. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're up eating shoe candy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, we are running short on time, buddy. But listen, we we love you. I love everything that you have going on as far as your YouTube. I want to just double check on something here with you so we can get it out. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely. Crazy J. So is it just Crazy J, just the letter? The letter J. Okay, so when they're, they're searching, it'll be Crazy J. Now, that's on YouTube. You're going to find roughly 50 videos of, of Jay's uh, work. And, um, you know, you know and it's such a, a nice variety of different things. Some things are funny. Some things are interesting. Some things are good stuff. Crazy J. You're going to want to check that out. Um, anybody else have anything for Jay today? So would you mind, like if we do, now that we're going to go back through and want to watch half of the videos that you've spoken of, coming back and, act, you know, touching base on them and, and you know, new oh, things yeah. are making. Jay, Jason has more stories than the Highway Patrol, I, so I promise saying, you like, he will be back. I'm sitting here to where I'm like, yes, we need more interviews. Yeah, I could do, we could do a four-hour like, episode and not run out of material yeah, with a guest absolutely. like Jay. Yes. You know what I mean? I could yes. talk for four hours. Y'all can just sit there and listen. If you want. <laughs> yeah. What I'm used to, though, is like rehabs telling my stories. Right. Yeah. I always like You're to good tell, at it. I tell my war stories in the form of an analogy so it doesn't trigger people. Yeah, right. That's how I do it. I love it. And I'm used to talking in front of 100 people live. Yeah. So if I mess up or I, if I smoke weed, it's like I know I'm going to forget You're something. Right. I'll right. be in the middle of a story and I'll be like, ah, oh, shit. You'll see me in some of my videos. I'll be there thinking. I'll just be like, I'll buy myself time and I'll just throw animations in the back. You're right. So when I'm done, I'll be like, oh, shit, back online like fucking yeah. Terminator. That's an actual one of my a videos. Bunch of cool stuff going on in his videos. <laughs> It, very cool stuff, Jay. Very, very cool. My thank you. Excited. Thank you. We thank you so much. We're going to keep in touch with you because we do want to have you back. Um, so, besides for that, if anybody else, wants anybody yeah. else anything, we'll uh, go ahead and cut out. We thank yeah. you, man. I'll, I'll, I'll on. do one more thing for the end. Yeah, let's do it. This cross. Oh, oh, no, I left it. No, I got it. This <laughs> cross? Yes. 
I got this 2013 and co forged in 2013. Can I explain what it means? Yeah. This is what I mainly did before I got into the recovery and other things. This is where, what made me, well, here, this is what it is about temptation. If anyone struggles with addiction or temptation of like anything, chocolate cake can be dangerous. Yeah. I ate a box of Swiss rolls. I feel like shit no more. <laughs> or because gambling, whatever. But anyway, it's about temptation and knowing that you always have a way to escape. This comes, I go by the new King James Version because it's poetic and it takes a years and years out. Oh. I can only comprehend so much at a time. Right. But it's from uh, the first book of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13. It goes, according to the New King James Version, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. What that means is no matter how strong the temptation is to do wrong, you always have a way to do right. Absolutely. You may not see the righteous way, but it's there. God will always carve that path out. And and all you gotta do is ask. Yeah, you're right. All right. you gotta do is ask. No one wanna ask God stuff. They 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 don't want to blame him for dumb stuff and they'd be like, well, did you ask him? Right, right. <laughs> I mean he might not say something back, but right. if you want to blame him for something, he might not want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> he might be busy. You know? Right, right. He got a lot of angels. Uh, listen, I hope I get an angel in heaven. Oh man, I hope so. I don't know how that works, but <laughs> <laughs> I need one now. Shit. All, all I can find now is demons at the bar, man. Yep. Demons at the bar. Exactly. That's where I'm going after this problem. There's a lot of demons out there, brother. I'm gonna save that demon for sure. Whoever <laughs> she may be, I'm gonna save that demon. <laughs> Hopefully that's tonight. <laughs> we thank you so much, my friend. We appreciate everything. You're always you're always welcome and you always have great stuff here. Crazy J on YouTube, check them out. Great stuff. You're not gonna be disappointed. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time.